If you want to find the probability of falling between two z-scores on a standard normal curve, you can do so uh, by looking up values in a table uh, that have been printed in the back of, let's say, a textbook. But it's a lot faster to just do so in your calculator. So, for example, a question might ask, find the area under the standard normal curve between, and this notation means between, uh, z is equal to negative 2 and z is equal to positive 1. So on my curve, I mark z equals negative 2 and z equals positive 1. And what I want to know is what area is in between those two values. So if I were to color it in real quick, I want to know the area of being in this yellow outlined region. And I can see just from a quick visual, it's probably going to be something a little over half of the normal curve. So I'm probably somewhere maybe in the 70 percents. Uh, if I had to just take a quick guess. But what we want to do is actually calculate it. So by sketching out the picture, you can get yourself a rough estimate in your head of, as to what you're looking for. Uh, but what your calculator can do is, using a function called normal CDF, uh, you can plug in the left edge, which in this case is negative 2, and plug in the right edge, which in this case is positive 1. And if you do that, your calculator will tell you exactly what area is under the curve. So normal CDF, negative 2, comma, 1 is what we're going to type in. And if we pull out our calculator here, we go to second, followed by uh, distribution, which is the VARS key here. And right near the top, you'll see normal PDF and normal CDF. We're actually going to never use um, normal PDF. Uh, it gives you a probability of being at an exact point, and it's not something that really makes any sense in most contexts. So we're going to ignore that. Uh, so normal CDF gives us a range of values. And so if we choose that one, we can type in our left bound, which is negative 2, and then comma our right bound, which is positive 1, and hit enter. And it tells us 0 0.81, and if we round this off, 9. So 0 0.819. And that's roughly around the probability we were estimating, somewhere in the 70 percents, maybe as high as 80. So it's about 81.9 percent chance that you're going to end up in this yellow region. So let's try that again. It says, find the area under the curve for z is less than 1. So I draw my 1 here, and the region that I want to find is everything from this point here on down. And then it goes down towards infinity. And then we're going to get all this region as well. So all of this yellow region. And my guess is it's going to be even bigger than the region we had before because we stopped at that negative 2. So maybe as high as 85%, uh, percent, something in that area. It says left comma right for the normal CDF function. And what's tricky about that is we don't have a left bound. It goes on forever negative. And so we have to make one up. If you put in any very negative number here, you could put in negative uh, 1 million, and that would be very, very, very uh, far away. That would not make a difference. Um, but what it turns out is you can actually take something as small as negative 99, and 99 standard deviations from the mean is so enormously far away that uh, it will give you the exact same answer. So we're just going to put in negative 99 to represent negative infinity for us, because really this goes backwards to negative infinity. On the right side, we stop at 1. So that one we do have to be very specific with. So this first value, I picked some very, very negative number, like negative 99. And on this side, I picked 1, because that's where we stop on our graph. And if I punch that into my calculator, we go to second vars, our distribution, normal CDF, negative 99, comma 1. And that's going to give us 84.1%. So 0.841 is the probability of ending up in that region. Another example here says find the area under the curve for z is less than negative 2. Same approach. Z is negative 2 and downwards. So we go from our left side of negative infinity, which I'm going to call negative 99, because that's far enough towards negative infinity, and then stop at negative 2. So normal CDF, negative 99, 
negative 2. So they can both be negative, and that's okay. One does not need to be positive. Second VARS, normal CDF, negative 99, comma, negative 2. And we get 0 0.022. 0 0.023 if we round it off. 0 0.023. And then uh, let's look at this example here where we have some actual real numbers now. The mean score is 600 and the standard deviation is 40 on a standardized test. Find the proportion of people who score above a 580. Well, a 580 doesn't correspond to one of these values on my standard normal curve. So I need to convert that into a z-score as my first step. So if I have a score of 580 and my mean is 600, then I scored 20 below the mean. And I'll just write that out as 580 minus my mean of 600. So I scored 20 below the mean. And how many standard deviations is that? That negative 20 divided by each standard deviation of 40. You do that in your head or do that in your calculator and that's going to equal negative one-half or negative 0.5. So we are negative 0.5 standard deviations when we talk about uh, this 580. And it wants to know the proportion of people who score above this value. So our z-score statement, if we were to write out a z-score statement, is that z is above greater than negative 0.5. And if I go to my standard normal curve, negative 0.5 is right around here. And I want to know the probability of being above that, so I want to shade this side of the curve. And that means I go from my left side of negative 0.5 to my right side of positive infinity. And again, 99 is far enough towards positive infinity, and it's quick to type in my calculator, so I'm going to pick that. Normal CDF then, I'm going to use the exact same function after we've converted everything to z-scores, and I can go from negative 0.5 to a 99, and it will tell me uh, exactly what I need to know. So negative 0.5, comma 99, get all my characters in there, and I get 0.691. So 0.691 is the probability of, or the proportion of people who score above a 580 on this standardized test. So 69% of people score above a 580 on this standardized test. Last question, uh, same test, mean of 600, standard deviation of 40. What percentile are you in if you score a 640? Uh, percentile is very similar to just saying the proportion below. In fact, that's exactly what it is. It wants to know how many are at or below your score. Uh, so if we look at that 640, let's figure out what that is as a z-score first. So 640, we always figure out how it compares to the mean. So the mean is 600, so we take away that 600 and it says we are 40 above the mean. And then we divide by our standard deviation of 40 and then we are going to be 1 standard deviation above the mean. So this is our z-score formula. We are one standard deviation above the mean right here. We want to know what percentile it's in. So percentile is at or below. And when you're dealing with the standard normal curve, you don't have to worry about the at so much because, uh, again, we say the probability of being at exactly one. It doesn't really make sense as a question when you're talking about a continuous distribution. So simply saying z is less than one will be an accurate way of framing the problem. And of course you're getting pretty good at this by now. We're going to say from negative infinity down here to a positive 1. So in my calculator I'm going to say negative 99 because that's close enough towards the negative infinity and positive 1. And when I do that we will get our answer. Now, as I'm calculating this, some of you might be thinking, well, I remember some of those probabilities that uh, I can expect to find on the normal curve. So do I need to actually use my calculator for this? And the answer is no, you do not. So 0 0.841, 1 
would be the answer. That's the percentile then would be the 84th percentile. But getting back to that question here, if we know that between here and here is 68% of the data, 68%, and the, the curve is symmetrical, then that means that there's 32% split between these two tails. And in particular, if you split it up in half, there's 16% down here and 16% up here. And so this curve has everything shaded except for this upper 16%. And if you take the total 100% minus the 16% we don't have shaded, what do you get? 84. So if you feel comfortable using those values instead of just using your calculator all the time, that's a nice little shortcut to be able to find area under the curve and do percentiles.